the reason that we um, are starting this series is because we realise that every, uh, every major organisation and, and company in our sector is currently looking at diversity and inclusion as a major, um, uh, I guess, initiative in their business. Now, some people are further down the journey than others. And uh, we, we recognise that at ACOM we're on our journey and it's not complete and we've got much work to do. And we realised that if we talked when we, and when we talked with our clients and our other partners, that they were doing stuff that we could learn from. We also realised that there was a more power in us working together. What were the key two or three barriers the female CEOs talked about in your research that stopped women progressing to leadership? The big three would be um, access to childcare. And there's four pillars behind that. So um, spouse support, family support, then there's external childcare, whether that be nannies or after school care or whatever, and then workplace flexibility. And those four pillars, have one of them has to be present. I think the next one is the bias story around access to career relevant assignments and projects early on. Um, and then there's a momentum that builds from that. Um, and if you don't get that kickstart or that momentum early in a career, then you're always behind the eight ball. Um, and I think the third one was around um, key networks and access to key networks and being around and being visible when decisions are being made about who should get what assignment. I think those three stick out. There's no silver bullet. Uh, I think that's something that is very important to understand. We all have biases. We all like to think we don't. We like to think it's the person next to us that has the biases. But as humans, we all do. So we all have generalisations formed from our experiences, um, assumptions that we've formed from our background. And starting those conversations on what they are and how we can be aware of them and how we can start to create some bias interrupters to really break down some of those uh, biases in our businesses. I want my daughter to have exactly the same opportunities in life as my son. Um, everything from her being confident to have the same right to have a point of view and a perspective growing up and equal access to an education and employment opportunities. So I graduated as an engineer and joined an engineering firm in 2009. And I think that's when diversity and inclusion became relevant to me because I saw no female leaders in the business I worked in. I didn't see very many opportunities for me to progress my career to the level I wanted to pursue um, and felt that there was definitely a difference between my male peers and, and the potential that I had for my career compared to them. So I ended up changing career as a result. So I personally don't ever want anybody else to make a career decision around that. So that's why it's, it's a very important topic to me. I grew up with a Caucasian mother and a Indigenous father. So um, I just remember from a really young age um, going to the shops with my mum or my dad, going to school functions and seeing the way that people um, treated them differently. And it wasn't anything negative or it wasn't anything super um, bad. It was just that there was a difference in the way that people treated them. For me, diversity is a key part of what I do. If I can't understand diversity or improve my understanding of it, then I'm not going to be the leader that I want to be. When I think about the future, I think about the past and growing up with my mum who said to me constantly, you can be whatever you want to be. You can do whatever you want to do. And the future for me is that that really does become true, that opportunities are open to anyone, regardless of their gender, their race, um, their cultural background. It really is an opportunity-driven world. For my workforce in the Department of Transport and Main Roads, uh, we're 52% female now, yet that isn't reflected in our management structure. We can do a lot better and we can do it re relatively quickly compared to some other organisations because we already have a strong base. So for us, the aspirations are really high. And for me personally, I think we can get there very quickly. It's a way of life. It's something which is really deeply ingrained in me personally. It's really about ensuring that people can come to work and present their whole self. It's a community issue, it's an organisational issue, it's a family issue. It's really around accepting everyone and showing respect to everyone, however they present and whatever their backgrounds might be. When it comes to gender inclusion, um, to actually see uh, at least a 40-60 
um, mix at CEO level in ASX companies, which is ambitious in my lifetime, but I think that would be a milestone um, worth seeing. We wanted to look at what initiatives were going to provide some real leverage in moving diversity forward for our industry. We wanted to look at the appropriateness across all of our organisations. It's acknowledged that we're all at different stages or we have been focusing on a different aspect or aspects of diversity.